Hi everyone, we're going to continue uh, with the tutorials for today on optimal control. This time uh, we're going to talk about an, the optimal control of the continuous valued state as opposed to the binary state that Zach talked about in the last tutorial. First of all, who am I? Uh, I'm a postdoc at the Columbia University Center for Theoretical Neuroscience and I'll soon be a faculty at the University of Florida Electrical Engineering Department. Um, I love to experiment with coffee and cocktails, so come talk to me after about that. Um, and also I'm recruiting, so come join the laboratory for neural control at the University of Florida. Um, and uh, secondly, um, Zheng Hui uh, Wu is the amazing person who, who designed all the optimal control tutorials. Uh, she's a postdoc at, uh, at Rice and Zach's lab. So let's get started. This tutorial is about flying through space. So here, let's imagine that we're playing tag in space. So um, of course, you are the cat here playing tag with these mice um, and you're in space. So what do you have uh, in order to get from one position to the, to the in order to get from one position to the other? It's good that you have this handy little jetpack to zip you around. So let's get on the same page with some of the some of the nomenclature. So here we're trying to catch a mouse. Uh, and, and we're flying through space in order to do that. Um, the mouse here we'll call the goal. We can send get to the goal. The jetpack creates an action. Um, so that is your control input, in fact. And uh, the state that you're trying uh, to control is your body position. So the state, in fact, um, is the body position of the cat. And of course, you want the state to be equal to the goal. That's your. That's what you want. Now, uh, we'll consider firstly that the state has some dynamics of its own. So that means that the state is kind of drifting, uh, drifting in space even without any action on it. In general, this, these state dynamics can be a nonlinear function. Uh, here, f is a nonlinear function of your um, state at the last time point and of the noise. Now that becomes very, um, that becomes very tricky mathematically. So in this tutorial, we'll consider uh, that your state is a linear function um, of the state at the last time point and an, additive, um, and an additive noise term. So as I said, this is a linear function and this, this is a good approximation for a lot of dynamics. Um, now, now, as I said, this noise, this process noise uh, it's called, this is any kind of environmental noise that may be affecting you that cannot be modeled. So in this case, it could be meteorites uh, hitting you and changing your body position from, um, in an unexpected way. And we'll start off with an initial condition. Great. Um, so of course, you wanna get to the goal, remember? So this is the action that you apply in order to get to the goal. This action also linearly um, adds to your state dynamics. So any action at time t, um, a one unit of action at time t will create b units um, of uh, b units of change in your body position at time, at time t plus one. Okay, so these are the dynamics that we're considering, and the question now becomes: How do you actually optimally design this action at time t or at all times uh, in order to reach this goal that you want? Okay, so let's start with something called open loop control. Here, uh, I'm just drawing a block diagram for what these equations entail. Um, and uh, so just to get an intuition of how uh, we can actually start designing this action in order to reach our goal, uh, I'll go through an example with some numbers. So this is what we want. We wanna design this in order to get to um, our goal. So let's consider our goal is at the origin. So this mouse is at the origin and we have been displaced um uh, some two units in order to um and, and we want to get to the to the origin so in this case what we would do is we would want let's say to um let's say we would want to get to the goal in one time step so we would want s1 equals zero now what is s1 uh it is a linear function of your last state plus a linear function of the action that you will take at time zero and in general, of course, it's also a function of the noise, but we are going to, in, for this example, just consider that there's very low noise. We're working with no meteorites around. Okay, so we want this. Um, let's plug in, um, 
course, are state at time zero. And what we want to find is this A0 such that S1 is equal to the goal is equal to zero. And we very easily find that the optimal A0 for that is just um, negative 0.9. Great, so we want to apply negative 0.9 of action uh, in order to get to our goal in just one time step. So what happens now if S0 actually changed to 10? So let's say you're further away from your goal um, because you've been displaced further. How would that actually affect your action? Well, uh, it's easy to find out. Let's say you still want to get there in one time step, right? This time, your um, the desired state at time zero is a function of your um, current state. And uh, we, we can just, again, assume that this noise is negligible and solve in order to get uh, your optimal A0 is negative 4.5. So you'll see you'll just need to apply a much bigger action in order to get to the goal in one time step. That makes sense. Great. Okay. So you'll notice that the desired A, the desired action, actually changes depending on S0, the initial condition. This makes sense. Um, but the problem is that in open loop control, in fact, while we may know G, the goal, we don't usually know uh, the, the initial state of the system, S0. We may know the dynamics, uh, but we don't know uh, the state itself. And this creates a problem because even if you now, you know, apply a suboptimal A of T for a couple of time steps in order to get to your goal somehow, you um, are still affected perhaps by this process noise. So even if you get to your goal, you may be knocked around, uh, around your goal, um, let's say like go in circles or, or just be um, uh, drift around the goal you can't do anything about it. Um, so this, this does create a problem. Uh, how do we fix this problem? In fact, we can do something called closing the loop. So here I'm closing the loop, and this is called now a closed loop controller. Um, you can see, in fact, open loop control as one extreme where we may not know anything about the position. And closed loop control is, in fact, the other extreme where we know the position exactly. Later on, we'll see a more realistic case where we have partial observations of the state and we still have to make an action. But here, our action here has uh, access to our state at time t. Uh, in fact, we formulate it as a linear function of the state at time t. So this is the state at time t is multiplied by something called a control gain in order to get our, our action. So how do we now design this control gain? So that's what our problem becoming how to design the control gain in an, optimal, in an optimal way in order to get to our goal. So, so let's get back to our numbers. I'll just give you a brief example again. So we have here, uh, let's say we still wanna get to our goal in one time step. So we want S1 to equal to zero, um, which is a linear function of our state at time zero. Plus, now I'm going to plug in the action at time zero as L0 times S0. And this, uh, now you'll see that S0 can actually come inside these brackets. And so our desired L0 doesn't actually depend on our initial state. So L0 now becomes negative 0.45. But again, if we change this initial state to 10, we, our, our L0 does not actually change. This is very desirable because uh, we don't actually, um, we don't have to design the controller again, depending on where exactly you start from. Great, so now it's your turn. Uh, I want you to design uh, and it's first uh, play around with the state dynamics uh, without any control, so just the state dynamics drifting according to linear dynamics. And then uh, try out open loop control. Try plugging in different numbers. Um, and then uh, actually try out closed loop control as we just talked about. So here you'll be designing the control game as I just did in a very small example. Um, now you'll look at optimal uh, control gains and over ambitious control gains where you may get oscillations um, and also under ambitious uh, control gains where you just may take much longer to get to your goal. 
So I want you to go try this out and I'll see you back here in a bit.